So I have a couple of questions for you this morning, and the first one is, how many people know someone who has risen from the grave? No? No? Okay, then let's try this. How many people have known someone who has uh, wakened from a coma? Anybody? Good. How many people know someone who has uh, come out of a long stay in ICU? There you go. There you go. How many people know someone who has raised their voices to speak out for in, against injustice and for Jesus? Great. And how many people have known people who have risen up to march for good things. I think that the many ways that we've experienced resurrection should give rise to our spiritual sensitivities and to our curiosities day by day by day. Because the Greek word for resurrection means simply to get up. And every one of you this morning made a decision to wake up and get up and get dressed and get the children together and bring them to worship. You have been resurrected. Amen. You know, there are uh, as many as 10 resurrections in the Bible. 10. We tend to think that Jesus is the only one. Even the gods of ancient Greece and Rome have been resurrected. And yet we need to expand our thinking from the valley of the dry bones to the raising of Lazarus and Jairus' daughter by Jesus. This morning we read Peter raising Dorcas from her Death. It's so incredibly powerful. And the uh, disciples who are gathered uh, know that Peter is in town, and they say, they send someone to Peter and they say, Come to us without delay. Now, it's interesting, right? Because what is probably true is that they remembered the story of Jesus when they called upon Jesus to come to attend to Jairus' daughter, and Jesus sort of takes his time. He dilly-dallies. He doesn't rush. He knows his power, but he gets there, and so it is that she is raised. When Lazarus has fallen asleep, right? Another word uh, for death throughout the spiritual uh, and theological language. Uh, Mary and Martha say, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died in the first place. And yet, Lazarus is raised and Jesus says, come out. And so it is that we are uh, in the Acts of the Apostles this morning. The Gospels tell the story of Jesus, and the Acts of the Apostles tell the story of the Apostles at work building the early church. Apostle, those sent out. You are resurrected this morning and you are apostles. As we send you out Sunday by Sunday, we send you out to do the work. We do the work of worship and baptism and Sunday school and education. We do the work of study and prayer and activism. We do the work of mission and ministry. It is the acts of the apostles. It is not the arguments of the apostles, and yet they do argue. It is not the audacity of the apostles, but they do have that. It is the acts of the apostles, the action of the church. And all of us, wired a little differently, some of us to pray and to make phone calls, some of us to get out and march on Washington, and we need a little of that right now. So, uh, some of us wired to be in small group, some of us wired to lead in those spaces. 
study and prayer. It is the action of the apostles that makes the church, that makes us healers and teachers and tenders to the flock, as we read last week. And isn't it true that mothers do that work? I'd like to say best, but it is also true that not everyone had the best uh, family dynamic or had the best dynamic, and yet mothers, many, many, many mothers have a gift of tending to the tears and caring for the kids and cultivating personality, loving unconditionally. And that's probably why historically the churches were filled with men in leadership and many women who supported them. At Sparta, Pastor Charlie was known to have, forgive me, Charlie's angels. And at Sparta, there was always a sort of group of backup singers, as we would call them, to the male heads of the church. And at Sparta, there was a ministry and a mission group called MAD that was mothers and daughters in mission, born out of a need to keep the UMW alive and in action. And moms used to bring their kids once a month to do mission projects, to teach the kids to write letters or make care packages for prisoners, to make lunches for the people who would line up every month to get a lunch and a gift card from the grocery store. We are apostles in action. It is the work of the church. We worship, we pray, we bless, we send, and we do the work we are called to do. You know, on this Mother's Day, there are many people we think about. Not only um, family legacies that are messy, but women who desire to have children and are not able to do so, people who struggle, who can't afford in vitro or who have spent their last dollar trying to do so. We are mindful this morning of all the women, all the women and those who need some options because what has happened with their bodies is not what God had wanted. And so we pray this morning for the women. Dorcas, a female, a named disciple in the Acts of the Apostles. It is good that we highlight, we hear of the women, and we know a few are named Dorcas, raised by Peter, who comes without delay and prays at her bedside and raises her up. And she is uh, the widows who gather to bathe her, as was custom for burial, gather around. And when Peter arrives, they show him all her good works, tunics that she sewed for the poor, how she worked, how she did, how she was of service, how she was a servant of Christ. And... I believe that Peter would have raised her either way, but I love the cover of the bulletin that depicts her in the iconography with the rolls of fabric, remembering who she was as a sewer and a bringer together, not unlike the fabric that we wove. We are tending to God's flock. We are lovers and healers and prayers and activists. We are mothers and daughters and brothers and sisters. We are she and he and they and them, and we are one in Christ Jesus. It is good that we would gather together. It is good that we would remember who we are, resurrected Easter people and apostles sent out to be in action. Amen.